Let's talk about why so many Afghans are being deported from Pakistan. Take a look at this. Tens of thousands of people are on the move. Some have lived in Pakistan their whole lives. One point seven million Afghans were ordered to leave by the Pakistani government, and more than three hundred and seventy thousand have now crossed into Afghanistan, a country already in crisis where winter is setting in. This is not the right time for hundreds of thousands of Afghans, the most vulnerable, to be heading back to nothing. So what's behind this mass deportation? And what does the Taliban government in Afghanistan have to do with it? Afghanistan and Pakistan are neighbors. And over the decades, there have been several waves of Afghan refugees who've crossed that border to escape instability or war. Like in 1979, when the Soviets invaded Afghanistan, when the Taliban took over the first time in 96, after the US invaded in 2001, and again, when the Taliban returned to power in 2021. So over the years, Pakistan has become home to millions of Afghans, 3.7 million before this recent deportation drive. That number includes people with legal permission to live in Pakistan, the so-called documented refugees, as well as others who are considered to be there illegally, those who are undocumented. They're the people being targeted by the government. In early October, Pakistan's interior minister announced that all undocumented immigrants had to leave the country by November 1st or be deported by force. This pronouncement didn't call out Afghan refugees in particular. It said all undocumented refugees. But of course, the vast majority of refugees in Pakistan are Afghan. Um, so it's, it's you know really thought to be uh, obviously about them. So why is the government doing this? Well, they're really giving a mix of reasons. They say Afghanistan is now a safe country for Afghans to return to because the war there is over. They've also been saying that the refugees are a burden on Pakistan's economy. But whether there's actual evidence for that is up for debate. The government of Pakistan is not providing handouts to them, not providing sanctuaries or houses for them. They are earning whatever they can and paying their rents, paying their food, everything is, is by themselves. So they're not as such a burden on her Pakistan. Pakistani officials are also linking Afghan refugees to the security threat that Pakistan is facing. They say that Afghans have been responsible for several attacks in the country this year. Interim Interior, Interior Minister Safraz Bukti quoted, without presenting any evidence, that out of the 24 suicide attacks that he, we have had in the country, 14 have been conducted by Afghan national. But there are other layers to the security issue and how the government is linking it to refugees. And those have to do with the group known as the Pakistani Taliban, or Tariqa Taliban Pakistan, TTP for short. They want for themselves what the Afghan Taliban have achieved in, in Afghanistan. Essentially, they want to take over Pakistan. That is not a realistic or achievable goal in, in Pakistan, right? So they have an insurgency against the Pakistani state. They certainly pose a, a major security threat to Pakistan. The TTP have been behind some of the country's worst attacks. The death toll from the Taliban's horrifying attack topping 140, almost all of them young students. And over the last year, there has been an increase in violence in Pakistan. Hundreds of attacks and more than 700 civilians and security forces killed. Many of the attacks have been claimed by or blamed on the TTP. Now, the TTP, the Pakistani Taliban, does have a relationship with the Afghan Taliban. They're ideologically aligned, and the Afghan Taliban are accused of providing a safe haven for the TTP to operate from. Pakistan is grappling with increased terrorism, and that terrorism does have a link with Afghanistan, but the link is that it is the TTP that is engaging in these attacks, and it's engaging in them because it has the sanctuary on the Afghan uh, side of the border. And so uh, that is why Pakistan is facing increased terrorism, but it is, um, you know, disingenuously linking this increased terrorism to Afghan refugees within Pakistan's own territory. The TTP issue has also been straining the relationship between Pakistan's government and the Taliban government next door because Pakistan wants the Afghan Taliban to do more to help it tackle the threat from the TTP. Pakistan's 
state thought that the Afghan Taliban could prevail upon the TTP. Uh, and I think the sense is that it can prevail upon the TTP to stop its atta- attacks in Pakistan, but it chooses not to. So it appears that government wants to put a clamp down and is now saying that enough is enough. We have tried to talk to you, Afghan Taliban. A lot of times we have given you a lot of chances. We have sent you a delegation. This cannot go on anymore. In response to all this, a Taliban spokesman said it does not allow anyone to use the territory of Afghanistan against Pakistan. And Pakistan should solve their internal problems by themselves and not blame Afghanistan for their failures. And a lot of people think this dispute over the TTP is actually one of the main reasons that Pakistan is deporting so many Afghan refugees. As the expulsion drive is being used as a you know tit for tat. When you send back thousands of Afghan nationals, um, the government over there has to take care of them. So for them, it is a headache. So let's look more closely at exactly who is being forced out of Pakistan. We mentioned that the government is basically targeting Afghans who are undocumented. And that includes a whole range of people. It's refugees who fled to Pakistan and were never registered, or they were registered at some point, but their documents expired. It also includes many Afghans who were born and raised in Pakistan, but don't qualify for citizenship. You will actually see people, uh, you know, Afghan refugees who are for all intents and purposes, Pakistani, right? Born and raised in Pakistan, attended school in Pakistan, work in Pakistan. We have absolutely no ties at this point to Afghanistan and they have never been there. Plus, there's another group among the undocumented refugees. And these are Afghans who fled after the Taliban takeover in 2021 because they feared for their lives. Many are eligible for asylum in Western countries like the US and UK, but are still waiting for their claims to be processed. For example, there are 25,000 Afghan refugees in Pakistan who are waiting to be resettled in the US. I think that one reason Pakistan um, has uh, engaged in this uh, policy is also to try to put pressure on Western governments to speed up those pending asylum applications. After Pakistan's announcement on deportations, the UK government sent a plane to bring around 130 refugees to the UK. And Pakistani officials say they're expecting 12 more flights by the end of December. Now remember, all of these undocumented Afghans add up to about 1.7 million people. And right after Pakistan made its deportation announcement in early October, hundreds of thousands of Afghans rushed to the border, leaving their whole lives behind. It just sent a layer of shock and panic among all Afghans in the country. Many Afghans were leaving in panic. Um, uh, Majority were telling us that they were just fearing arrest and detention. Once the November 1st deadline passed for people to leave voluntarily, Pakistani authorities started a crackdown to find and deport undocumented Afghans still in the country. This Afghan neighborhood in Islamabad, for example, was completely bulldozed. Law enforcement has engaged in uh, in threats, uh, in in very heavy-handed behavior and raids. It is quite evident that the drive is being used to harass, to push people away, to coerce them into paying money, or just get rid of them. And even though Pakistan's deportation drive is only supposed to apply to undocumented people, there have also been lots of reports that Afghans with the right papers are getting caught up in it too. There are many registered refugees or others with documents who are approaching UNICR centers and uh, saying uh, that they also are feeling the push that they needed to leave Pakistan. Nearly 400,000 Afghans have crossed the border already, and every day, thousands more are coming. Many have ended up in camps on the Afghan side. They're relying on aid and figuring out where to go next. 
it's also getting really, really cold. And remember, Afghanistan is a country that's already dealing with a profound humanitarian crisis. More than 29 million people in dire need of humanitarian assistance, which actually about two thirds of the country population and more than 15 million people in Afghanistan do not have access to foods and they don't know that where their, their second meals come from. So this mass return of Afghans back to Afghanistan is going to put an additional layer on the top of the already ongoing crisis. If you want to know more about the crisis in Afghanistan, check out this episode. <laughs>